In this video, we're going to look at the LZX Swatch. Swatch is a color space utility module. It doesn't have many controls. Instead, it offers a simple patch matrix. It offers a lot of color shaping complexity in a very efficient package. At its core, Swatch takes an RGB input, converts it into YIQ color space, and then back into RGB. If you'd like to know more about how YIQ color space actually works, you can check Wikipedia. But to get up and running using the module, you only need a very basic understanding of what YIQ color space is. Similar to RGB, it has three color channels, Y, I, and Q. But instead of each carrying an individual color, the Y channel carries the contrast information, the black and white image. The I and Q are combined to make up all the colors in the spectrum. So this will be a little bit easier to understand if we look at the individual outputs. So I have the RGB output here going into a matrix mixer. I'll turn that off, but you can see our parrot there. And these are just basic RGB controls. And then if I take the Y output and we look just at that, you're going to just see this black and white version of our parrot. If I take the I output, you're going to see half of the color information. And if you take the Q output, you're going to see the other half of the color information. So if we compare here real quick to what we're seeing there, you can see the red is coming out of the Q. So if we just look at the Q, you can see kind of reddish and orange parts. The I and the Q outputs are isolating different parts of the color spectrum. So on the left-hand side of the module, we have all these outputs. So it's taking the RGB input values, converting them to YIQ, giving you those YIQ outputs, as well as an inverted I and an inverted Q. These are normaled to these YIQ inputs. And so this is what we're going to be seeing on the output value. So right now we're seeing basically exactly the same as what's coming into the input. You do have an over output, and in this case it's going to look the same. What this is just going to do is this is going to give you the raw YIQ signal, whatever you're plugged into here. So if you were boosting these, for example, uh, it would give you values over one or over pure white. And if you go to clamp, it's going to clamp that down. So I'm just going to keep using the clamp outputs for now. We can go more into using the over outputs in a different video. So what are some basic things we could start to do here? Well, if we take the I and Q output, let's just take the I output for now, and we start playing with it inside of this loop, we could start to adjust the color information. So the I output is going here to a processing module. Actually, let me plug that into B. And you can see if we get these values just right, turn B up and turn down any offset, we're going to get exactly the same as what we had before, right? No difference. Oh, getting a little violent with the cables here. Um, but if we start to play with this information, well, we can start to adjust the hue. And you'll notice the contrast information, the black and white information is not changing because we're not doing anything with this. Uh, so this is a really nice way to play with color. And obviously, we could start to introduce some other aspects to this. So I could take an oscillator, for example. And we can go down to, let's just do an LFO range. So you could start to get some color modification. And of course, we could do the same to the Q channel. So I'm just going to plug this in to another channel on our processing module. And so now we can start to affect both color channels. And obviously we can take this up into video rates. So we can have just these stripes.
And we can do the same for the Y channel. So I could take the output of the Y, I'll just put it into a filter here on the contour. And again, we just patch things in between these inputs and outputs. And so now we're starting to filter just the black and white information. So if we go and take these out, our color information will be unaffected. Of course, it will get darker or it will start to wash out as we change where the blacks and whites are. So here we have a lot of really strong black information. So we're starting to lose some of the image. And let me take this filtered output and again, use a processing uh, module just, just so we don't have quite so much contrast there. So you can start to see, there we go. So you get more of that color back if your Y input is not just pure black and pure white. So this is a very cool way to not in any way affect the color information in an image and just play with the monochrome contrast information. There's also some really simple things you can do. For example, if we take the inverted inputs and outputs and connect them to each other, we're just going to get an overall boost in the saturation of the image. This is because we're essentially doubling the color information by doing this. You can also take the inverted outputs and plug them into the regular inputs, and this is going to invert your color information, which is cool because you can invert just the chroma aspect of the image, so just the colors without inverting the contrast information. And you can also play around with different combinations of all these things. We could plug basically any output into any input and start to get some cool different color combos of a simple image. So now that we've got these basics covered, let's take a look at what it can do with an incoming video signal. So now we're going to look in practice at what we can do with an external video signal. So I am feeding in a video from the TBC2. This is playing off of a Raspberry Pi. And again, we've got our RGB outs going into the RGB ins, and then we have the clamp output going to a matrix mixer. This is just going to let us help see some stuff if we need. You could go straight into the encoder, but this is going to make it easier for me to patch in different parts of the patch so we can take a look at what's happening individually. And so we've got these guys uh, getting some work done, just uh, busy doing some stuff. So one nice thing is we could take the Y output and start to get really wild with it. So I'm going to go into the input on a stairs and let's just quickly take a look at what this looks like by itself. So again, we're isolating just the Y channel. So that's just going to be the black and white information. And we can make this really trippy and psychedelic. Cool. And so now that we know what that looks like, let's put it back into the Y input on the swatch. So we can start to get that stairs stuff happening inside our color video without messing with the color information. So you can still see that yellow post-it popping out, sort of blue on the left-hand side of the screen. Now stairs is going to give you a very contrasty output, so similar to what we did before. Let's take a processing module and take that stairs output into there first. So that way we can reduce some of that contrast we could also do fun things here like invert it if we wanted to, but I just want to get some of that contrast out so that some of the color information comes through a little bit more clearly. There you go, we can start to play with that. And now another interesting thing we could look at is starting to mix some of that Luma information into the color channels. So I'm going to take the eye output and I'm going to put that into another channel of my processing module. And because I already have my Y patched in here through the stairs, it's going to filter through to that B output. So what I'm doing is I'm mixing together the Y into the I channel. So you're going to immediately see something pretty drastically different. And I can control X 
exactly how much. So this is getting me back to roughly where I was before. And then I can start to mix in some of that contrast information. And then this is going to give me sort of like a rough hue control. And we can invert it and take it all over the place. Let's do something with the Q channel that's a little bit similar. Actually, maybe let's take the inverted Q just for fun. So we'll take the inverted Q output, go into A, and bring that back into Q. Whoa. And so then we can bring little bits of that video information in. And have a play around like that up our stairs a bit. But of course we could break this normal connection. So on this queue, perhaps instead we want to put in something like a uh, shape from the dual shape generator. We just play with some different shapes here. I'll make it really strong so we can see what's going on. Cool. So then we have these different color changes that happen based on the shape. So now we've got something very psychedelic and trippy going on. And just because we've got two extra outputs here, let's plug those into some different things and see what starts to happen. So these are the positive Q and the inverted I, and I'm just not really doing anything specific here, just trying to see if we can find anything cool to play with. So that's going to give us a little more variety there. And then this inverted eye, maybe we'll put that into the phase control here. And that just gives us another level of complexity to our color information. And now obviously, you know, we're using stairs here, but with a swatch and a processing module and really any type of image modifier. So like we could be using a contour instead of the stairs or a keychain or any of the older visionary modules or expedition series, they're all going to have some cool effects that you can do. So next, let's take a look at what we can do in the context of a shape or pattern generation patch. One thing that's really cool about Swatch is for a very small module, it actually allows you to do a lot of fairly complex colorizing of patterns or shapes. It's just a fast and convenient way to start introducing some color into otherwise monochrome patches. So here I have a little pattern that I've created. I'm just using two outputs from my dual oscillator. I'm keying those together. Uh, that's creating those circles there. That is modulating the steps on the stairs. And the stairs input is coming from a dual shape generator. So we have this cool pattern and we want to start introducing some color to it. So one interesting thing to note is that here, I'm not really using the RGB inputs. This is going to look the same whether I'm plugged into my RGB inputs or whether I just plug it directly into my Y input, because there is no color information. So you can see that's looking the same. So I'm going to keep this plugged into Y for now, because I'm not really doing anything with the RGB. We could plug a bunch of different stuff into here, but I think it's going to be clearer for you to see what's going on if I just use these. So these outputs right now aren't doing anything. I'm just using the raw power of patching directly into YIQ color space. And so the simplest way to start is just take a bunch of these extra outputs that I have from these different modules and just start to plug them into these different inputs. So, you know, I can just start to take all these different blends I have from my oscillators. from my dual shape. And even just there, that's pretty interesting. And so now if I go and I change my pattern around, just get all of this. And obviously plugging different inputs in, it's going to have different results. I could also take different mix outs from my stairs module. I could take a different output from my keychain that's creating those circles. So this is going to give me sort of a different type of shape there. So that's going into the Q negative. 
Maybe I'll do a couple of those because that's kind of fun. And again, I could use processing modules. So this output into my I plus input, I could go into a processor, take that output, and this is going to give me a little finer control over exactly what that hue is. And I can also start to change those colors by introducing a modulation source into the processor. So I can go over here to a pendulum. Sorry, go over here to a pendulum. Start to change that. Of course, I could also bring a different one into some of these key keychain inputs. See what that's doing. Nope. We're into my staircase. Woo! And as I go back and change the original black and white shape, all that colorizing information is going to change along with it. So that's just a really nice, easy, fast way to get a bunch of color information from a few monochrome sources. And you just need to use these inputs. Don't even need to use this left side of the module. And you can imagine trying to do something like this with just a matrix mixer would be basically impossible. For something that appears so basic, Swatch does have quite a few tricks up its sleeve. And there are even some upcoming Gen 3 modules that are designed to help make working with Swatch a little more intuitive for everyday color modification purposes. So this is definitely a module we'll be exploring more in future videos. I hope you enjoyed this brief look at Swatch. Please leave any questions in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.